Hello and welcome to this pre-recorded talk on emerging community leadership for digital learning in the performing arts conservatoire sector. I'm Evan Dickerson. I'm a learning technologist with over 27 years of higher education experience uh, in both hands-on and management roles in both uh, small and specialist universities such as the Guildhall School and larger universities including uh, Queen Mary University, um, St George's etc. I joined the Guildhall School of Music and Drama as their sole learning technologist in July 2021. So a little bit of um, information about what distinguishes a performing arts conservatoire from a more generalist university. And really, as we can see from both of these um, sources here, uh, Conservatoires UK and UCAS distinguish uh, conservatoires by means of their delivery of approach of teaching and learning. So um, we can think of conservatoires as including dance, acting, instrumental and vocal performance and uh, you know the emphasis is on the skill, developing the skill uh, rather than uh, the more academic uh, history, criticism, uh, understanding of the theoretical underpinning. Though of course conservatoires by nature of their discipline have to teach some of that as well. Um, and as you can say in a conservatory education, individual development is paramount. So rather than uh, taking a large body of students, teaching them as a group, although necessarily that happens in some areas, uh, you know, in individual development of uh, skills in singing or uh, performance of any kind, drama, um, whether it's behind the scenes in terms of um, the various roles in production arts etc that we cover at uh, the Guildhall uh, that is all, all part of uh, you know what is what is covered. Um, we can think of learning technologists then if we focus on our, our particular role as having uh, several different peer networks and these um, are represented by some of the some of the um, images on the screen here. So you can think of it in terms of people at different areas of their or different phases of their career, whether they're early career learning technologists, uh, such as that network that exists on LinkedIn, or at the other end of the spectrum, there's the heads of e-learning forum. Um, you know, there are other types of network as well, you know, so we've got uh, JISC Mail that acts as a kind of very loose network like that, uh, often connecting people around a particular interest or, or, or theme, um, particularly use of technology. And there are groups and communities that exist of, around particular technologies. Uh, so in structure, um, have the UK Canvas Users Group, for example. There's the Moodle Moot. Uh, there's uh, the Panopto Annual uh, Users Conference uh, the, in London. Um, there are some geographic um, groups as well, like in London. There's the Moodle Users Group, Greater London, Muggle. Um, and of course, Alt have a number of different groups, whether they're geographic or uh, focused around a special interest. Uh, when I presented at uh, tail end of last year was the copyright and online learning special interest group, which was very uh, in interesting to, to see uh, copyright issues and talk about them from a learning technologist's point of view. And there are also other groups and networks like the uh, learning network, which is perhaps more aimed at the uh, commercial aspect of uh, learning technology rather than the uh, university sector. So what about a peer network for the conservatoire sector then? Well, um, I looked around when I joined the Guildhall School, there wasn't one. 
uh, so it's a bit like a, a tumbleweed experience. Well, to say there wasn't one wasn't strictly true. There were a few uh, things that just mail list here that was very, um, you know, sparsely used and that kind of thing. So it seemed that the, there was a space, even amongst all of the groups that there were already. And um, if we think about how learning technologists often employ uh, leadership traits, what do we do? We we are proactive, uh, we build teams, we are a collaborative in a very nature of our role and we enhance the visibility of um, the people we work with and um, you know quite often we meet for a purpose as well. Uh, so all of these things Herbert and Lovett have identified and I think leadership in the learning technology space I would say to use this final quote from their paper uh, needs to be nimble, should be dynamic, uh, is quite often fluid and responsive to need and adaptability is crucial. So therefore, um, December last year, I decided I would try and form a, at that stage, what was a, a peer network group rather than um, you know, a, a leadership forum of any kind to share pract practice between institutions. Uh, we had an impartial chair, a colleague of mine um, who I've known from a previous uh, work role, Julian Bream, agreed to come along and be a chair of that. Uh, so that, you know, somebody impartial was running it on the day uh, and all, everybody who uh, took part felt that they could uh, share their views openly. So garnered participation by invitation, people I knew elsewhere around the conservatoire sector that I tried to, um, you know, find out who was where, uh, LinkedIn, uh, just mail list, etc. Uh, put posts up, invited um invitations and sign up via Eventbrite. So we focused on three main questions. This was really just to kind of what you find out what the, the landscape in the technology uh, sector was like and in the conservatoire space. So what works, what hasn't worked in terms of technologies, uh, sharing some of the major challenges of the past two years and what do we think the future of learning technology looks like in the conservatoire space. So those were three questions that we really um, focused on debating online. This is a screenshot of, um, you know, the meeting itself, Julian there in the center at the top, chairing the thing uh, with the questions, uh, you know, behind him. And, you know, some of, the some of the members you can see there. So we had some good representation, um, Guildhall, uh, Central School of Speech and Drama, Royal College of Music, uh, you know, Oxford University, uh, other places like that. Uh, so, you know, we, we had a good um, set of representation, I'd say. Some, so some outputs from that. Um, internally on the left, you can see I did a, a write-up for our internal, um, you know, intranet. And I also incorporated a lot of the, the quotations and things like that that came out of the session into a forthcoming chapter I'm writing, have written for uh, a publication in uh, a CEDA special journal to be published in the autumn. And that was peer reviewed. And one of the peer reviewers said that it was really good to have representation from the uh, conservatoire sector, which is underrepresented in the uh, literature both of learning technology and uh, you know educational development as a whole. So if I was to summarize where I think an initiative like this could lead it is um, by having uh, you know regular meetings uh, diarized so that the people knew when and where they were happening uh, varied participation modes, have some on site, have some online, maybe hybrid sessions as well. Um, discuss topics of value to others that are suggested by and led by the community. Uh, have um, It has the potential to be a forum for kickstarting further collaboration uh, between institutions, I think. And it can have value if people evidence that internally for themselves and show that 
attending things like this um, makes a difference with the uh, decision making uh, that they do internally. But, uh, you know, I think with things like this, if you build it, they will come eventually. But one of the key takeaways, I think, is start small. Learn to walk with it, build it gradually, get people to buy in, and then uh, eventually you can run with it. Thank you.